Hey guys, what's up? Today, we are going to talk about fractions. I am your teacher, Mr. Marquis Santa Maria from Governor Luis A. Ferrer Jr. East National High School. Are you excited to learn? Come on, let's, let's explore the world of fractions. First, let us determine the learning objectives. At the end of the lesson, you are expected to first define a fraction. Second, identify the numerator and denominator of the fractions. Third, represent fractions in number line. And the most important is you should know how to apply the fractions in real life situations. Let's begin. So what is a fraction? The word fraction came from the Latin word fractus, which means broken. Then, we are going to define fraction that represents equal parts of a whole, and fraction represents equal parts of a set or a collection. So let us first talk about the fraction of a whole. When we divide a whole into equal parts, each part is a fraction of the whole. For example, we have a one whole of watermelon, isn't it? Okay, if this one watermelon is divided into two equal parts, so each part is one half. So therefore, the upper part is one half and the lower part is another one half. Suppose that one watermelon is divided into four equal parts, so each part is one part. So we have one fourth, another one fourth, another one fourth, and another one fourth. So next example. So since one part of the watermelon was eaten, then three parts out of four are left. So three parts of the watermelon is left. So we have one part, another one part, and the one part for a total of three parts of the watermelon is left. Let us now proceed on the second definition of a fraction. So fractions also represent parts of a set or a collection. For example, we have a set of balls. So how many balls do we have? Let us count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and uh, 6. So how many types of balls do we have? We have two types, basketball and football. Suppose that we are going to determine what fraction of this set of balls is basketballs. Okay, how many basketballs do we have? 5. And the total number of balls is 6. So therefore, the fraction is 5 over 6 or 5 6. Next, so what about if we are going to determine what fraction of this set of balls is football? So since there is only one football on the set of balls and 6 total balls we have, so therefore, the fraction is 1 over 6 or 1 6. For example, we have one whole, one half, one fourth, and three parts. Other examples of fractions. First, one fifth. Next, three eighths. Next, seven tenths. Next, five sixteenths. Can you see numbers above the fraction part? We have one, three, seven, and five. What do you call those numbers? And what about the numbers below the fraction bar? We have 5, 8, 10, and 16. So what do you call those numbers? So fractions has two parts, the numerator and the denominator. When we say numerator, it is the number on the top of the line and tells how many equal parts of the whole or collection are taken. While the denominator, it is the number below the line and shows the total divisible number of equal parts the whole into or the total number of equal parts which are there in a set. Let us explain that further in this example. So we have two pips. The number 2 is what we call the numerator or the number of equal parts are taken. While the number 5 is what we call the denominator or the total number of equal parts in a whole or a set. Can you see the fraction bar? 
course. So what they call the Prussian bar. So other countries uh, name it as a bigulum. So let us now apply fractions in real life. So the most common examples of fractions from real life are equal slices of pizza, fruit, cake, a bar of chocolate, and etc. On the first figure, the pizza was divided into six equal parts. So therefore, each part is one sixth. While on the second figure, the watermelon is divided into four equal parts, then each part is one fourth. On the last picture, so we have a melon which is divided into eight equal parts. So each part is one eighth. When parts of the whole are unevenly divided, they don't form fractions. As you can see, on this first figure, the pizza was divided into six unequal parts. Then, on the second figure, the circle was divided into two unequal parts. On the third figure, the triangle was divided into three unequal parts. And on the last figure, the, the square was divided into eight unequal parts. So therefore, they don't form fractions. Fractions can be also represented on a number line as shown below. So the first number line was divided into two. So the first part is one half, the second part is one or two halves. The second number line was divided into three. So the first part is one third, the second part is two thirds, and the third part is one or three thirds. Number line was divided into four. So the first part is one fourth, the second part is two fourths, the third part is three fourths, and the fourth part is one or four parts. Next, the next number line was divided into five. So we have one fifth, second is two fifth, third is three fifths, fourth is four fifths, and the last part is one or five fifths. Next example, the number line was divided into six. So we have one sixth, two sixths, three sixths, four sixths, five sixths, and one or six sixths. Then the last example was divided into 8. So the first part is 1 8, 2 8, 3 8, next 4 8, next 5 8, next 6 8, 7 8, and 1 or 8 over 8. And I hope that you learned something. Thank you guys and God bless. Keep safe.